you know what I'm going to do today? We're going to make a video on both the Canadians and the Canucks and their injuries and the sort of update video as to both of these situations because I'm a Canucks fan, I'm a Habs fan, these two teams are playing games today and I don't know what I want to do with that going forward so let's get a little update video on both of these teams out at about lunchtime Vancouver time so it leaves time for you to watch either of these games when they do occur. Let's talk about the Canadians and the Vancouver Canucks in terms of injuries, talk about the players coming back, talk about the players that are going off and how that could be detrimental to some of their careers. Yeah, I'm not exaggerating about that. Let's start off with the Montreal Canadiens, the news that you've probably heard about previously. It's Jonathan Drouin and it's Paul Byron. They're out for a while. Byron... I think it's currently indefinite. He's having knee surgery, and Jonathan Drouin hurt his wrist in the third period of a game, and he's getting surgery. He'll be out for about eight weeks. So Jonathan Drouin is a guy whose 2019 is over in terms of his NHL playing time. So right away, that's two key injuries to the Habs for two guys who have been a really big piece of this forward core. Druan is obviously the bigger name than Byron, but still, Byron has his own attributes that he adds to the team. Let's talk a little bit about that Ovi hit. First off, the Canadians are saying that the Ovi hit on Druan is unrelated to the injury. Now, I don't care if that's true or if it's not true or whatever. That hit, I think it was a pretty legal hit. It's a hockey play. He just cut towards the middle and Ovechkin kind of just ran him over. But that obviously is something that you would rather not see. Whether or not the injury came off of that play, we don't know for sure. Some people are very heavily speculating that it did. But that's just how it is now. Eight weeks is the timeline for Druan. Drouin this year was doing pretty well, 15 points in 19 games played. He was on pace for a career year, and yeah, that's not happening anymore. As for Paul Byron, he was all the way down there at 4 points in 19 games, which isn't amazing. But at the same time, Byron has been a consistent 30-point guy for the past few years. He got 43 points three seasons ago, and 31 last year in only 56 games played. So seeing the lack of production out of Byron this year has really put a little bit of a fork in the road. But I will say that Byron's presence will definitely be missed. We don't know the timeline for it right now as of the recording of this video. But for Drew Ann to miss eight weeks and to miss the remainder of 2019, it certainly will be a hit. Steve Dangle talked about this in his little update video on the Canadiens. Yeah, that's right. Steve Dangle did a Canadiens video that this is the opportunity for some of the guys in the lineup to really take their spots and to really establish themselves as true NHL forwards who can tango and produce and actually make a difference. Nick Suzuki is the guy that he labels out as somebody who could potentially use this chance to maybe even further himself into the Calder Trophy discussion. With the spots opening up from Byron and from Drewan, the ice time is going to have to be split a little bit differently. Some guys are going to have to be played more. Some new guys may have to even be called in. But some of the guys that they do have that have been producing at a pretty good rate, this is their chance to produce even more. Suzuki, he's in that boat. Suzuki at the moment is sitting there at just under half a point a game, nine points in 20 games. He's doing really well for a young guy. And for a first-year NHL player, that's certainly something that you would like to see. But now that Druin is out, there's some spots opening up. That top six, man, Tatar, Gallagher, Deneau, Domi, then add in Suzuki, and then put in whoever else you want, Armia, I guess. That's the top six at the moment. So... The way things are rolling out now, there's a really good opportunity for both Armia and Suzuki to get those point totals up. And they're going to have a lot of time to do that. Knee surgery is quite serious in the case of Paul Byron, and Druen is already confirmed for at least eight weeks. So the time for the Canadians to really start doing things with their younger guys and for some of their other players to step up, it's now. 
That's why a lot of people are saying that the Canadians can afford to miss out on Byron and Drouin. Sure, they're good players, but the Canadians have proved themselves deep enough this year that they honestly could still do okay. And that's awesome to see. Now, finishing up with the Habs segment, let's go over to the Vancouver Canucks. If you're a Canucks fan, hey man, I'm a fan of both of these teams. So I don't want to hear anything in the comments saying, yo, Lego, why did you do that? I don't want to hear about anything. Habs, I just want to hear about the Canucks. Okay, well, then you can just skip to this point or whatever. But let's talk about the Vancouver Canucks right now. Let's talk about the good news before we get over onto the bad news. Antoine Roussel, the guy who's been practicing in a full contact jersey, at least according to the Canucks. Via Thomas Drance on Twitter, Roussel is cleared for contact, which is awesome awesome to see thank goodness Antoine Roussel is still here he's still kicking he's still got a chance to make an impact on this team because believe me if there's a player that last season I was completely in love with that I didn't think that I would adore so much it was Antoine Roussel the guy's an absolute workhorse. He does not let up on the play. He's always getting in there, grinding down low, getting his hits involved, fighting when necessary, and just being a pest. There's a reason Antoine Roussel and Alex Burrows are pretty good friends, and it's not just because they're French. They're really similar in the way that they play, and in my opinion, Roussel is just a little bit more feisty than Burroughs was, just from my own recollection. Obviously, I was really young when Burroughs was here. Not when he left, but like, I was only 11 years old when the cup run happened. Actually, I was only 10. My birthday didn't pass that year, but Roussel, he was a guy who honestly was really, really good for the Canucks last year, despite the big cap hit or whatever. I really, really would rather have Roussel than not have him. So seeing him being cleared for contact after almost, how long has it been? A year? Something like that? It's a beautiful thing. It's a really beautiful thing. In other Canucks news, we have ourselves some other players that are coming back. Check out this tweet here from Thomas Drance. Travis Green says, Furland has been taking part in on-ice workouts. Beagle is probably going to play today. And Brandon Sutter may be back for a practice on this road trip. So this is really good. Really, really good. In about two or three weeks or so, maybe even less than that, we could expect to see all of these guys back in the lineup. A fully healthy Vancouver Canucks forward core. How does that sound? Imagine Furland and Roussel on the same gosh darn line. That sounds absolutely phenomenal. Imagine the tenacity with that line. And taking a look at Beagle and Sutter, if you do that, Gaudette may have to be moved to the wing or maybe even put Sutter on the right wing on the fourth line or whatever. Have a top six of Miller, Petey, Besser, then your second line, Pearson, Bo, Vertanen, then your third line, I don't know, Furland, Gaudette, Roussel, and then have a fourth line of... Erickson, Beagle, Sutter, and then wait till Mott comes back. Something like that. So the Vancouver Canucks are in a really good position because all of these guys could potentially come back sooner than later. And as long as nobody else gets injured, hey, we're closer to a full Vancouver Canucks team. But speaking about the Vancouver Canucks, we'll move on to one more story here today. And it's a bad one. This is a terrible story. Oli Olevi, man. I haven't talked about this on the channel yet, but Oli Olevi is out again. Check out this statement made two days ago from Jim Benning about Yolevi. He was removed from the Utica Comets active roster and will be evaluated by Canucks medical staff in Vancouver. He has a lower body ailment unrelated to his recent knee injury and there is no timeline for his return to play. Really? Again? Ah, <sighs> this is really unfortunate. I feel really bad for the guy. Sure, he's a bust right now. That's what Craig Button said you're allowed to call him because he hasn't been performing up to a fifth overall pick's expectations because the injuries have really slowed him down. Do I think he's going to be an NHL defenseman one day? I think so. But I don't think he's going to be top two. 
Peck at this point. I don't even know if he's going to be top four. The guy's had so many injuries, and it's just so unfortunate to see. And I don't know what else there is to say about that. Hope you enjoyed this video I made talking about both the Canadians and the Canucks, the prospects and the players. Games are going on today for both of these teams. Social that is Russell and I. And bye.